Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 13 before going ahead with part 14. Now let us look at equation of continuity. Equation of continuity is a very important equation when it comes to moving fluids. In order to arrive at equation of continuity, let us consider a fluid which is moving through a tube of varying thickness. Varying thickness that means the tube is not uniformly thick everywhere. Somewhere it is less thicker, somewhere it is even more thicker. Let us look, have a tube somewhat of this sort. If you see, the left end of the tube is thicker when compared to the right end. So we let us consider that we have a fluid which is flowing through a tube of these kind of thickness. Let us say the cross-sectional area here is A1. The cross-sectional area at this end is A2. Let us suppose the velocity of the fluid at this end is V1. The fluid is moving somewhat like this. And the velocity of the fluid along this end is let us say V2. Now let us say in time, in a very small interval of time, say delta T, what would be the volume that will be covered by the fluid across the left cross-sectional area? The volume covered along the left end would be nothing but area into displacement. Volume covered by a fluid is nothing but the cross-sectional area into displacement. So cross-sectional area is A1 and what is displacement? Displacement is nothing but velocity into time interval. So velocity of the fluid was V1 and time interval is delta T. Similarly, what would be the volume uh, across this end? So let us consider this is 1 and this is T. So in time delta T across 1, this is the volume covered by the fluid. So what would be the volume covered by the fluid across 2? The volume covered will again be area that is A2. Velocity into time taken, velocity is V2 and time taken is delta T. Right? So this is the volume at this end. Now, if we say when we talk of equation of continuity, we assume that the fluid which is flowing inside is incompressible. So, if the fluid is incompressible, this is an assumption or you can say this is a condition for equation of continuity. If the fluid is incompressible, I already explained what is incompressible. Incompressible means the volume of the fluid does not get reduced even if we apply pressure. That means on applying pressure, the volume does not get reduced. So if the fluid is incompressible, that means the density of the fluid will remain the same, right? Because the volume doesn't get reduced, the mass remains the same. So density is nothing by mass by volume. So density will remain the same. Since the fluid is incompressible, therefore density, let us suppose the density at the air is rho 1 and density at this end is rho 2. If the fluid is incompressible, then rho 1 is equal to rho 2. So if density is equal, that means the volume or the mass will also be equal. So how can you write it? You can say, so we saw the density is same. Now we know that density is equal to mass by volume. Now we will write down the expression for mass. So along 1, what would be the mass? Mass will be nothing but density into volume. Density is rho 1 and volume is this. So this will be rho 1, a1, v1, delta t. Similarly, what would be the mass across the second end? The mass across the second end would be rho 2 into a2, v2, delta t. Now, from this condition, that is the fluid is incompressible, we can see that rho 1 will be equal to rho 2, right? 
and we also see that this a1 v1 delta t will be equal to a2 v2 delta t because this is the volume covered by the fluid across this end and this is the volume covered by the fluid across this end. So we arrive at a conclusion from this that in or for according to conservation of mass, this mass has to be constant. We already saw that rho1 is equal to rho2. Delta t and delta t remains the same. So from these two we find that a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. So this is nothing but the equation of continuity which states that area into velocity is equal to constant. This is the expression for equation of continuity. So what is the conclusion? This is also known as conservation of mass in flow of incompressible fluids. So the term incompressible is very important when it comes to equation of continuity. So let us have a review of this. Here what did we do? We considered that let us suppose we have an incompressible fluid which is moving through a tube of varying thickness. So let us consider the two ends of the tube as 1 and 2. At end 1, the area is A1, velocity of the fluid is V1 and let us say the density of the fluid is Rho1. Similarly, at the end 2, area of the cross-sectional area of the tube is A2, velocity of the fluid is V2 and the density is Rho2. Now, we said that let us suppose that in a small time interval delta T, what is the volume that is covered by the fluid at end 1? So volume covered will be nothing but area into displacement. So area is A1 and displacement is velocity into time taken. So A1, V1, V1, delta T. Similarly at end 2, what is the volume covered by the fluid? It is A2, V2, delta T. Now since we have told that the fluid is incompressible, that means the volume is not reduced even if we apply pressure. That is, the density of the fluid remains constant throughout. So, rho1 will be equal to rho2. Now, from conservation of mass, we say that mass is equal to mass at end 1. What will be mass at end 1? We know that density is equal to mass by volume. So, using that, we can say that mass will be nothing but density into volume. So, we wrote the expression of mass at both the ends 1 and 2. Now, mass has to be conserved. So, if mass has to be conserved, then this it should be equal to this. Rho 1 and Rho 2 is already equal. Delta T, Delta T will get cancelled out. So, we are left with A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2. That means area into velocity is equal to constant. So, if a fluid that is, if an incompressible fluid is flowing through a tube of varying thickness, the product of cross-sectional area and the velocity of the fluid will always be constant. Right? In the next slide, we will see what do we conclude from this expression. A into V is equal to constant. So, I hope that in this slide, it is clear to you what is equation of continuity. And how do we derive equation of continuity? Now let us look at the discussion on the equation of continuity. The first point to be noted is volume flux or flow rate remains constant throughout the pipe. What do you mean by volume flux? Volume flux or flow rate that means the rate of flow of the fluid. Even whether the cross-sectional area is more or the cross-sectional area is less the velocity of the fluid will also change accordingly. Just now we saw that cross-sectional area into velocity is equal to constant. That means if the cross-sectional area is more, velocity will reduce. Similarly, if the cross-sectional area is less, velocity will increase, but their product will always remain the same. So from this we can say that the volume which is covered by the fluid at any cross-sectional area remains constant throughout the pipe, even if the pipe has different cross-sectional areas at different points. So the volume flux or the flow rate remains constant. The second thing is the fluid is accelerated when passing from wider 
towards narrower end. It is a very simple point. Let us suppose wider end. That means cross-sectional area is more. Let us suppose this is A1 and this is A2. That means in this, in this case, this is wide and this is narrow. So the fluid is moving from wider to narrower end. So here we can say that A1 is greater than A2. Now let us suppose the velocity of the fluid and across A1 is V1 and the velocity of the fluid across A2 is V2. We know that the product of A and V is constant. Right? So if A1, that means A1, V1 should be equal to A2, V2. Right? So here we can see that A1 is greater than A2. So how will this equation be satisfied? Only if V2 becomes greater than V1. That means if A1 is more than A2, then this V1 will be lesser than V2. So that both the sides get balanced and A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2. That means if area is more, then velocity will be less. So here in this case, V1 will be less than V2. Similarly, if we consider a fluid moving from a narrow end to wide end, then the velocity will reduce. So here it says from wider to narrower end, the fluid gets accelerated. Obviously, if the velocity is increasing with time, that means the fluid is getting accelerated. So it is clear now, greater cross-sectional area means lesser velocity. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.